really, really heavy compared to this my Ultra Breeze. This is pretty heavy. This is pretty heavy. Yeah. Okay. My Ultra Breeze is very lightweight. Well, now, I've got three or four suppliers that's offering to send me stuff. So mm -hmm. I, I don't want to get into that. I've got enough going on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then let's get started, Don. We're recording. What are we talking about tonight? Okay. First thing we'll talk about is, is business part of the, the beekeeping. In April, the first Saturday of April, we plan on doing our first grafting class. You need to send me an uh, email. Let me know you're coming. We're going to hold classes uh, small. We're going to do a full-blown uh, grafting and installing caging queens, do the whole nine yards of what queen rearing is on each class. The classes will be $100 and it will be a full day. And we're gonna do several events in April, towards the end of April and then several events in May so that when people leave here, they can graft or they could buy some queens. Uh, and the next thing is uh, we're gonna do some high building classes and try to do those online. And we want to do some beginning ones. I'm doing one Sunday, and I got one rack set up out there. It's basically to cover everything in beekeeping as far as setups, all mediums, mediums deeps, eight frames, uh, several different combinations. And, and I'll explain to them how they work and why they work and what you should do and kind of figure out which people want to go into business. The ones that, actually today we had an amputee come up here, he's gonna sign up for classes, and he was excited about all mediums because he can handle the medium five frame, and he can be in beekeeping and make him a, a living. So other than that, I'm hoping everybody gets a bunch of questions going. Hey, Jim. Jim's sleeping. <laughs> Nobody's got Anybody their hands questions? Yeah. Not yet. Keep talking. <laughs> okay. Keep talking, huh? Kelly's here right now from um, Texas, and he's hauling a bunch of bees back. We had 500 some packages here. We got about 200 left out there. So <clears throat> we don't have very many extras. If you're local, we might have a couple extras. And as far as uh, the bees, we put in bees. The last three loads, we started in the middle of February. We're getting our stuff ready for our nukes to go out in May or, or in April. And we have extra queens right now. Stephen just come in with about 100, 150 queens. Hmm. And uh, has anybody got anything about getting their self started as a business? Uh, Terry has a question. Go ahead, Terry. Yes. Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah, I will hear you. Okay, perfect. Um, I'm, I'm going to be getting uh, packages at the end of next week from this um, a very sophisticated beekeeper down in Lula, Georgia. Oh, maybe I know him as a cousin of mine. <laughs> and, and I'm a tad bit worried because uh, right now it's in the 40s during the day, 20s at night. I'm hoping it comes up to about 50 by next weekend when they're coming in. And I was wondering if you could uh, give me some tips and tricks for uh, installing those packages uh, so that uh, they're successful. Okay. The main thing is we've been putting our bees in starting in February, in middle of February. If you're getting bees in another week, it's not really that bad. I probably got three videos up showing three different techniques of how to put packages in, in cold weather or when you're going to have nights of cold weather. Now, the main thing is if it's cool outside, try not to spray them. If okay. you're going to use a mist, a little bit less than a one-to-one, -one, and use a sprayer, which makes a fine mist, one pump on each side is more than enough. I put 45 packages in, in the rain, Tuesday. So I didn't put nothing on them. I gave them a bump down and dumped them directly in. I laid all my queen cages 90 degrees across the frames. Okay, the screens was facing up because I knew we was going to get some cold weather. Now, if you put the queen cage between the frames and you have drawn out comb, there's only so much distance there you can get bees up there to keep the queen warm. And even on new foundation, there's not enough. But if you put a 90 degrees across the frames, they will hump up into a ball and create enough heat where your queen will be fine. Now, I've, like I say, I've got two to three videos up on package installing. We're gonna try to do a good video 
uh, Sun or yes, yeah, Sunday tomorrow, and I'm going to have it forward up to E, and he can bust it up into about three different sections because it's going to be an all-day event. So we're going to be installing package in the afternoon, going through the business end of it in the morning, different size boxes and stuff. Okay, so does that, does that yep. kind of help you? Yep. So queen ninety degrees across the top of the frames and green up. Okay. All right. That sounds good. Thank you. I appreciate it. I can't wait. Okay. Nobody else has questions, Don. You got to keep talking. We're not getting no volume now. Can you hear me? Maybe it's me. Hello. Yep. I I hear you now. Okay. <laughs> All right, we got no other qu Oh, we got Joe. Come on, Joe. What do you got? Uh, Don, what temperature would you worry about putting the queen crossways at night? Uh, well, I put them crossways because our temperature, the first part of the week was in the, the low 30s. So, you know, rain or shine, I have to put bees in. Okay, and, but if it's 40 degrees for lows, you wouldn't worry about it. Just put them down if, the frame. If you can do it, I would preferably put them inside. I'm, I'm under a pressure to have to do it. So here's one thing I will say. If you do anything before Easter, you run the risk. If you're going to make money at bees, the more the risk you make, you know, the, the better off you're going to do. Yeah. Okay. 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 Oops. Uh, Ricky, did you have a question? Uh, I can't unmute you. You got to do it on your end. It looks yep. like. Okay. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Yep. yep. Great. Okay. Yeah. Uh, my question is, I've put some queen cells, uh, some emergency ones, into a five frame nuke with a. Uh, they are on a like a half drawn out uh, frame, and I put it in with a full frame of honey, and the uh, virgin queen's hatched out. So she's been. This is a second day before she uh, goes and does a mating flight. So she's only got a handful of bees in the, at the moment. So uh, when, when should I add a frame of bees and how do I go about doing that when she comes back together? I try to mate my queens with the least amount of bees. So if you're going to put cells in, are you doing them in five frame boxes or are you doing them in a mini frame, mini boxes? It's a five frame box and I've got two frames in there at the moment. Okay, if you've got a queen cell and it's capped, there's no need to put open brood in there. I do yeah. mine with a, a frame of honey. If it's a capped frame of honey, you want to scratch some of it open. Put your uh, queen cell against the side with a frame of honey. Shake you at least a frame to two frames of bees in there and close them up. The bees okay, will well, migrate, they'll migrate up to make sure your queens hatch. Okay, well, what I did was I put uh, five, five cells in with a frame of honey and a handful of bees looking after those cells. So that uh, that virgin queen's uh, hatched out and she's killed all the others. So she hasn't done a mating flight yet. So I'm going to need to put some bees in there at some stage. So I'm just wondering when would I put the bees in and how do I introduce them? Do you got a good handful of bees in there? Yeah, yeah. That's all I would do. I wouldn't add no more bees until the queen comes back and you start to see her laying. At that okay. point, you can shake bees off of a frame that's a full frame of capped or three quarters frame capped brood that you can actually see them cutting their way out and hatching and put okay. one frame in next to the honey. And then when right. most of those bees hatch out, your population will start to rise. Make sure your entrance is reduced down because the hive is vulnerable to be robbed out because you've got mostly new bees in there. Okay, great. Thanks. Okay. okay. Anthony? Yes, hello. For those of you that don't know me, I I live in Thailand, um, and right now I have seven boxes, seven hives, and I changed bee farms. I, I was using one, and then I found two more, so I called that one, and and uh, the guys come out to the house twice. And this guy's 65 years old, been doing bees all his life, and they have 400 hives of their own. And one of the reasons I called this guy is I'm pulling out a frame, and I see um, capped brood with the cap got a hole in it, and I see dead white pupae in there. 
So I wasn't sure what was going on. So he said, mites, that's mites. And uh, so what they do here is they treat with formic acid. They take a stick that's like a double wide paint stirrer, same thickness. They dip it in the formic acid and they slide it into like the center of the, you know, the, the brood cluster on the frame and they leave it for three days at a time and say to keep repeating it until you don't see a drop, uh, you know, drop of mites down there. So um, this morning after I get done with Chad, I'll be going out there to see if there's any drop on the first one on the, we put some sheets of paper towel under there and I'll see what's on there and, and I'll redo them. Um, do you have any comment on what I said so far, Don? Well, if you want, I wouldn't use the paper towel. What I would do is get an old file, their uh, vanilla files, office files, yeah. where you put papers in, cut it in half or tear it where they fold, spray it with Pam, slide it in there for 24 hours, and then if you do have mic drop, they'll stick to it. It's a whole lot cheaper than buying those grid systems with the white paper. Yeah, all right. I'll see. That's a good idea. I have Pam, and I got a plenty of folders I can rip in half. I only got to rip four of them. So I don't have enough for what I need. You know, I'm cheap. I'm going to go the cheap way. Yeah, that's fine. Um, and you and I talked online the other day, and I'm, I'm probably just going to buy a probate because I don't want to mess with the wand. And the way my entrances are, I'd have to modify every one of them and make them bigger in order to be able to slide a wand in there. Well, they recommend drilling a quarter inch hole in the back of the hive. Yeah. Now we've been doing, well, I haven't, Steven's been doing them and he's found it's just as effective to blow it in the front. Now the only thing that he says so far is he wishes he had like four more caps and he had a student that would keep the caps full. He said he can treat faster than a student or he can, keep the uh, oxalic acid in those caps. But the yeah. caps, you can find somebody to make them, you know, that would fit it. And you have to wear a good leather pair of like welding gloves because you will burn the tar out of your fingers. Okay. You but can't... They, works good though, he said. Have you asked the guy that makes them, can't you just buy, you know, a half a dozen extra caps to go with the unit? You could, but you know I'm cheap. I know, I know, I know. I understand, but all right. So they do sell caps. All right. He probably Something. sold. He, in fact, he sent me an email. His so his sales has grown. Just mentioned it, and as soon as we can, we want to do a couple of videos of it in action. Yeah. Well, I did send him an email right after you and I talked and told him what was going on, and I'm waiting to hear hey, back. He's got some extra caps. He's going to send it to me. He's feeling sorry for me. Seventeen dollars yeah. a cap. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah, okay. I think if you know somebody that's a machinist, they probably could take that gear material, that white gear material, they probably could cut them out for probably a dollar, two dollars a piece. Made out of Teflon, Don. Yep. Jim's got one too. He's showing off with the caps and stuff. Mm -hmm. Got extra caps too? Yeah. Okay. But if, if you're running a 100, 150 hives, the, the one, don't get me wrong, it's 100%. It works. It's just slow. The, that ProVap, you can do one every 30 seconds. And if you're fast and got somebody helping you, you probably could do three a minute. As long as, it depends on how fast you walk. I kind of hobble around the bee yard because I don't walk as fast as I used to. So I can probably do two, maybe one and a half uh, a minute. All right. I just have one other thing. Um... When this other beekeeper guy was here, he said, you want to get a lot of bees? You want a lot of bees? You feed these bees pollen, sugar, and banana. And so I put pieces of banana in there. And boy, they're loving that. They're eating the hell out of that banana. Um, too early to tell if it's doing anything. But that lady, Katarina McDavid, I think her name is, mm -hmm. um, she posted a study from a university that did a test with banana paste, paste made out of banana, and said it increased honey by 20% and brewed by 10%. Do you have any comment on that? I, I would base my belief on area and condition of your bees. Because yeah. 
I could be producing honey and a quarter or half a mile down the road, they could not be producing anything. It's strictly by condition of your bees and the flow in your area. Yeah. That's one of those propaganda type deals where they're, you know, it's like my bees don't ever get mites and just, just stuff. There's a lot of people that make statements out there that's a very little truth to it, I think. Yeah, well, it kind of blew the hell out of them. If you smell like bananas, they're going to attack you. Because... Well, I was talking to students here today, and we brought that same subject up about the bananas. And they said if you eat a banana in a bee yard, that the bees are going to attack you because it smelled like uh, pheromone. And I have a picture of me eating a banana with my chin on an open high full of bees. So there's a lot of old wives' tales out there that have very little truth to them. Yeah, I, I, as you see, I posted a couple of videos. I don't wear protection, neither did my wife. Mm -hmm. uh, and the bees are like no reaction whatsoever. There was another video clip about a week and a half ago where a guy took a banana peel, the peel. Yeah. And he was just holding the peel down on the landing board to see what they do. And there was a lot of traffic in and out of the box, but only like two bees even walked on the banana or paid any attention to it. Now, the pheromones have a lot to do with the beehive. I have done experiments here where people have gotten bee gloves, and I will go over there and have a good strong hive and set my chin on the frames with bees actually boiling out the sides. And I will back up and I say, now take your glove and just drag it across the hive. And they'll have hundreds of bee stings in it. It's the pheromone won't come out of the gloves. Yeah, I've seen you do it. You're, I saw you do it in one of your clips. So, mm -hmm. all right, we got three other hands up there. I want to let someone else ask a question. Thank you. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, Mary, go ahead. Hey, Don. Uh, question about splitting hives. I know you said on Facebook after Easter. But I was wondering their own hives, and I, what about vertical split? I'm only picking up part of what you're saying, but what I'm hearing is what you're trying to split. Now, I'm using a lot of general comments as far as splitting and doing things before Easter, but if you have at least a year or two in beekeeping and you split, this time of the year, with a mated queen, you have a higher success than you would with putting queen cells or virgin queens in, or making splits okay. and walk away splits and letting them make their own. Those are the things you need to consider. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, uh, Patricia, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I had a lady the other day ask where she could purchase a queen bank. A queen bank. Is that what you want, a queen bank? She wanted to know where she could purchase one. Well, you'd have to go to the king bank. But a, qu <laughs> a queen bank is basically a hive with frames set up uh, with queen uh, cages back to back. It's a purpose of storing queens, overwintering queens. But you just make so, your own, right? Yes. It's, okay. Well, someone's playing on confused. words. I didn't know if maybe it was something special she was looking for. No. The only thing that I've come in contact with here, I've done a video on uh, timing boxes for beginners. And right. basically, it's where you get your timing down to almost exact day mm -hmm. by putting uh, two queen excluders vertical and having four frames in the middle and three on each side. And then you ro rotate your frame from one of the outside ones to the middle, like, say, Sunday. You do that. And then if you go and take one out of the middle and put it to the outside, come back on Wednesday or Thursday, and then graft from that frame, you should know all them eggs or larvas are going to be of the same age. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but a queen bank is just the box that you make on, up on your own. It's not so Right, special. yes. We used to do a, you can make your own frames, but you know where the wedge bar is. You get you some sticks that thickness. You can take a standard mm -hmm. frame and you put four runs there. And you can put three rows back to back. That's how we used to bank them. But I sell them faster than I could bank them. So, if yeah, you I couldn't figure out why she wanted a bank either. Yeah. And I had never seen one sold anywhere. Yeah. But I said I'd ask. <laughs> Joe's holding something up for you there, Pat. What do you got, Joe? Matt, just take a regular frame, bend you some quarter inch mesh in it, and you can put 
35 queen cells on that frame. Put it right down to standard hive, queenless. Okay. That's I think I Pat was wanting uh, a bank for uh, mated queens. Is that what you wanted, or queen cells? I think it was for mated queens. Well, yes. Yeah, that's it, got a queen cage on it. Yeah. Well, you can only hang but so much, but if you take a standard frame and you put a strip on each side, you put two queen cages back to back. You have to have the screens facing outward. Mm -hmm. You can right. put a double row, three double rows on a standard frame. Mm -hmm. I think okay. I can get I think I can get thirty on there on that frame. That, that's enough for me. I'm like you, you sell them too quick. Yeah. 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 Okay. I, I didn't think it was anything special, but I just wanted to make sure before I told her what I thought it was. Well, there's <laughs> a lot of things in beekeeping are either mislabeled or someone's got a slang for it. I haven't heard the term get bee gums in 30 years and then every so often it'll pop up. Do you have any right. swarms? You know, a swarm is an old term for a package. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you've got to get used to a lot of this, you know. We still got people that want to do uh, skips. Yeah, I get that too, yeah. yeah. But the, um, the lady that was asking about the queen bank, uh, she had seen somebody else was doing some experimental holding queens over the winter and not letting them lay. And so she was trying to figure out how she could get queens in the fall and hold them over the winter so that she had queens going in the spring already raised. And it's I told not her a good, people let them lay, they practice. don't ever lay right. It's not a good practice. Yeah. Queen bees have an ovaries. And they, when the ovary stops laying, they, sometimes they don't want to start back. Yeah. I've never had good luck with it. I try to sell everything out I got out in the fall or use it to make splits. Keep yeah. the machine running. Yeah, that's the way I thought too. Yeah. But you know, there's always somebody that's got an opinion about something. <laughs> I hear people that try to reinvent the wheel every day, constantly. Yep. Okay, that was my question. Okay. Okay, uh, Scott, go ahead. Hey, uh, I know you were talking about splits. Um, I'm just really itching to expand my apiary um i've got three or four hives that are really strong mm -hmm. and um it's got the frame of of, uh, of drones and caps brood and everything should i wait till i see queen cells or could i do some of those where i pull a frame of of eggs and brood and and do splits that way um or would it is it should i wait should i wait a little bit longer you wouldn't do the safest thing yeah, well, kind of. <laughs> well, beekeeping, queen rearing is, is a risky thing. But you're talking almost three different things there. If you're going to do frame with eggs and larvas, you're losing a month and a half. If you've got okay. a regular queen cells that are ripe, you're only going to wait seven to ten days. If you've got mated queens, you're looking at a three to four day turnaround. Okay. Okay, so now... I just said before that if you do any splitting of any kind before Easter, you will run that risk. I made 75 splits four or five years ago, and it was the record Easter freeze. I made 75 splits, and I know how to make a split. I lost every one of them. I make as many mistakes as everybody else, but I took a gamble, and I lost. That's why I ask you hey, what you got to lose. What do you want to risk? Well, I don't want to risk my, my hives, but... If you want um, to do it, you got that itch. What I would do is spend some money, buy some queens. That's going to be your surest way or your better way. Okay. That After was actually Easter, gonna... go with the, the ripe cells. Okay. So that was going to be my next question. Do you have queens for sale? <laughs> yeah. How many you need? <laughs> uh, how I, many you got? <laughs> well, I, I ain't talked to my son. He, he just walked out the door. Uh, do you are you going to pick them up or do they have to be shipped? Uh, they would probably have to be shipped. All right. If my son's phone number is on my web page, if okay. you either text him or you can call him. Now he has set himself a PayPal account up. So the minute you talk to him, if he has him, give him your number. They'll be in the mail the next day. Today's Saturday, so he's not going to mail them to Monday. Right. Okay. And so if, if I was going that route where I got, where I got mated queens, right. should I, is that where, because I've got several uh, empty five frame nuke boxes. So right. is that where I should put, put a frame of brood, frame of honey, a frame of pollen, and then the, the, the queen cell or the, a mated queen in there? I would put the mated queen 
you could have a frame of brooding there, but you want to get stuff right now that's almost capped. And then a frame of partially capped and open honey with some pollen on it. And then you could put three frames with foundation or starter strips and then shake you an extra frame or two of bees in there and leave the entrance open for at least three hours. Get rid of some of the field bees. That way you got a lot of nurse bees in there. And then keep them closed up. And I think you'll have a lot better success. Okay. All right. Thanks, Don. Okay. Okay, next up is Robbie. Go ahead, Robbie. Hello, can you hear me? Barely, you got to speak up. All right, hold on. I'm, today I'm outside. Um, I got some sunflower seeds and seniors. Um, I got. Robbie's breaking up pretty bad. I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> um, All right. Maybe type it in and he can translate it up to us. Are you there, Robbie? I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> I'm, I'm having a bonfire right this moment. I'm, I'm hoping this fire will come up pretty soon. C come back to me in a few minutes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, nobody else has their hands up. Everybody's being shy tonight. Well, we're doing pretty good. We got a, a bunch of good participants tonight. Mm -hmm. Paul doesn't have any questions. <laughs> Come on, Paul. What's going on? Uh, I'm still putting equipment together. <laughs> I can't imagine with that haul you had. Oh, uh, we just have so much snow up there too. It's not even funny. We still got three feet on the ground. Oh. You're lucky. There's somebody I talked to yesterday. They got six feet, and they wanted 40 packages, so they're postponing. <laughs> I got snow bees. <laughs> um, believe me, I'm getting itchy to get out there, I'll tell you. I'm just waiting to put some pollen on them. Well, be careful with the pollen right now. That's one thing everybody jumps on, that pollen. And when you start doing that and you start expanding that brood chamber out, where you live – you got more cold weather coming. If you expand it out, whatever's expanded out, they cluster up. You're going to lose the outside of that band. Yeah. Yeah, I figured I'm going to wait another two weeks yet. Yeah, at least. Yeah. I can't even open the hives up right now. It's Spring just fever just gets to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Uh, Pat, go ahead. Yeah. Hey, Don. If you were going to give advice to a new beekeeper, what would be some of the most important things you would tell them? I would say find a good mentor, someone who's kept bees for two to three years at least, and, and let them kind of, you know, point you in the best way, you know, here and there. Uh, and then don't listen to everybody because there's a lot of people that are experts out there with two hives. <laughs> or another thing I tell people is if you want to take advice, Take advice from people who make a living at it full time, not part time, and people that have some rate of success. And if they're willing to share, that's the biggest problem. The people who are successful are reluctant to, they, they don't want to share their inside information that what works because they're afraid you're going to take their business. Mm -hmm. no. Okay. You two can keep talking. Uh, Nobody's got hands up. Keep going. Can you still <laughs> see me? My my screen went white. Nope, you're still on here. Well, what happened to my screen? I don't know what you did. What'd you click no, on? We can see. Yeah, uh, we can see you very we, good. We can see you. I, I, said, I don't see nobody. Yeah, There's no boxes with anybody. It just says post attendee Zoom. You might. Oh, you must have closed out then. Uh oh. No, you can't. No, we see you, so you can't have closed out. You. Yeah. Did you minimize the uh, chat screen? Let me see. Okay, now I see it. Now I need to. I don't know what Joe there. made. Man. I'm not. A That's why I got you here. I can't do this stuff. <laughs> mm. this you, guys, you, guys, can. you guys see that? A big swarm we oh, got caught nice. in Mississippi today. Wow. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Mine were doing orientation flights yesterday. I'm worried to death that we're, they're going to try and swarm before I can get in them. The weather is so bad right now. I have a swarm in the tree yeah. now. He, he said that's filled up a 10-frame box. Yeah. Wow. 
Now, the people that's selling bees, don't be afraid to charge because all the way up the East Coast, I got people offered $50 more a package because no one's got bees right now. I don't know what they're doing. I think they're holding back so they get a better price. Well, it's really hard to get decent bees is the problem. You can buy bees, but they there's a big influx of them coming in right now. They're bringing them off the fields in Florida and bringing them up here and selling them as a nuke. Right. Telling you that you're going to get great bees. You're going to get tired, wore out bees, maybe. <laughs> well, here's the thing that I try to say. You don't have to buy my bees. Everybody's out there selling bees. I'm not putting chemicals on my bees. Right now, I could probably buy a tractor trailer off of the almonds. Single story, 10 frames from 95 to about 120. I yeah. won't touch them because it's either old black comb or they've got a bunch of contaminants on them. Yeah. Just that's what, that's what we're trying to tell people. But they say, oh, but they're state inspected. Well, the state mean, just looks for certain things. They don't right. judge it as to the no. quality of the bees or where they've been, what they've that's been doing. The number one thing people ask me, why am I getting this for that and why is somebody there? The state yeah. inspection, all that is, the state is certifying that they're free and clear of all communicable disease, transferable exactly. disease. That's all they're yeah. doing. Yeah. So, uh, but the clubs bring them in. Uh, the clubs go out and find where they can get them and bring them in mm -hmm. and sell them. You know, they were selling packages, and we told people <laughs> packages have a higher fail rate. Certain packages do, not yours, I know, but certain do. And so then they start. Now the thing is, they're bringing them in as five frame nukes, but they've been in Florida on the fields. And mm -hmm. now the guy's clearing his inventory out, and people are buying them like crazy $150 a nuke. And I'm yep. like, but I've got locally, and I don't have to sell mine, mine are sold out, but I've got locally raised bees. And so this is what the differences are. But new beekeepers especially are hot to get their hands on bees. And I think that's one of the biggest mistakes they make is getting crappy bees. They're looking for cheap. But here's what I try to tell people. I'm not advertising. And if you just read on Facebook what people say, there's people have been posting on there. Yeah, there's people selling bees for all kinds of prices. But did you read where somebody posted, Don's got the best packages, best death rate, all this other stuff. And I'm not advertising. I'm not paying people to say that. Put a right. good product out there. I mean, you know, there's enough money to do, be out there to be made, not have to rip people off. Exactly. I think that's the biggest mistake that new beekeepers make though is they're so desperate to get bees mm -hmm. they'll take anything not understanding you know what the difference is mm -hmm. and so um the, but the bee clubs i think are the biggest problem because they're the ones that are bringing them in <laughs> well we got probably five big companies that you kind of got to watch i mean you, you, you have to know what you're doing and you know, have to know what you're buying because mm -hmm. if you're a new beekeeper and you don't know what you're buying, they can hand you a pound of bees or a pound and a half and they say, that's three pounds. Right. With no I, idea what the question me, I keep a scale out there. I'll throw them on there. I'm willing to show them right in front of them and they're not going to lie to them. Yeah. Well, that's what I, I, like I said, mine are sold out, so I don't have to sell them. Yeah. But that's what I tell people. Come and look. Anytime you want, we'll open a hive, and I'll show you what we got. Um, well, Joe May, a, is, if he got a 1,000 packages next week, I mean a 1,000. I'll guarantee you could have 90% of them sold by the time that one week goes by. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing how uh, big the market is right now. Yeah. That They've died out in so many different places. Right. Virginia is finally getting on the pollinator protection mm -hmm. uh, thing. They're getting a new law passed and getting things out there. But up to this point, Mosquito Joe is the biggest problem we've got because they come through and spray everything, kill everybody's bees. But hopefully this now, is... The people here that are or watch this later, uh, I just talked to somebody that was from Tennessee. Tennessee has subsidized their beekeepers now. I have a young couple that got a complete outward grant, but I found out today that now they've changed that. They're paying a 50% toward your uh, purchase of your equipment. So check yeah. your local state. Some of them are given a full grant. Some are given a partial grant. Get the money. Virginia, Virginia has started that. They've had it for a couple of years now, yeah. but the money runs out so quick. It's only $150,000 for the state. And this year they're going to, um, what was the new one going to be, Leon? 
they're not going to pay you back. They're going to, you can come pick up boxes from the state. They're not going to pay you for, before you purchased your equipment and turned in your receipts. Right. Now a new beekeeper can go to the state location and pick up the equipment already for them to use. Yeah. And that's how they're going to do the grant. Well, it's not just people tonight that's watching this, but this gets broadcast over and over and over. Mm -hmm. Most people don't know there's free bees out there just for the asking. Call the police department. Call your 911. Call yep. every pest control. They're willing to give you all the swarms you can get. Yeah. I mean, I get we're calls on, all the time. We're on with the 911 operator, yeah. and they call us all summer long anytime somebody, you know, calls with a bee call. Right. But the thing that we learned on that is to call the person and, and ask them to tell you what the bees look like. Or take a picture. A lot of, they, they are calling you and it's wasp and they don't know the difference and they'll take a picture and send you. And you, I don't collect wasps. I only collect honeybees. <laughs> well, you need to uh, charge for your pickup service, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't run your vehicle for nothing. Right. Yeah, but th there's a huge ability to get uh, free bees. Uh, go hang up some swarm traps. Uh, right. Swarm mm -hmm. traps are easy to build. They're easy to hang. And uh, a lot of people don't understand, but neighborhoods, there's wild bees. If you see bees on the clover and the dandelions, go in that neighborhood and ask somebody, could you hang up a swarm trap? Yeah. Another yeah. thing is, if you go to fast food restaurants, walk around the back where the dumpster is. If you got bees there. <laughs> That's a good idea. I like yeah. that. <laughs> well, it, it, you, there's bees there. Yeah, dumpster diving, I'm sure. Yeah. Well, it's you don't have to food. dumpster dive. They, they go there for the soft drinks, but if they're yeah. in there looking for that, then you got bees somewhere close. So look around. Right. There's probably somebody who let you hang a, a, a swarm trap. Oh, yeah, yeah. As long as you can put it up so kids yep. can't mess with it or something. It's now, swarm traps, problem. you know, we don't get to talk about it a whole lot. I find a French wedge, which I put on my boxes. You can change a box. You can take a box that's got full of bees, put an empty box up there in three seconds. Yeah. And it's easy. It doesn't damage a tree. It's quick. And I found that if you, right now you use foundation. Put foundation in there with a little lemongrass, or if you got an old queen, put a dead queen in there. That works the yeah. best. If you yeah. put old comb in there, if you don't get a swarm within 10 days, you've got so much wax moth in there, you're not going to get a swarm. Yeah, it'll be a mess. It really right. will be. But it might be a good idea next time to bring a box with your wedge you're talking about. Right. Because especially me as a woman, sometimes I don't know all of the, I know what that looks like, but I didn't know it was called a French wedge. So Basically, I did a wedge. video on it. And all you do is take, tell Leon to take his saw and set it at 45. Take a one by four or a one by six. Cut it down the middle on a 45. You put one, yeah, no, nail it against a tree, yeah. and then the other Leon one on the box. Make it, but yeah. another beekeeper might not. So that right. might be a well, good idea to show. Yeah. Um, but yeah I run across a lot of people that bidding bees five years, and they don't call them frames. They call them racks or other things. That's one of my pet peeves this year. I'm telling everybody, if nothing else, get a catalog. Terminology. The blowout of the boxes. Don't call me and tell me that you got queen in the super if you're calling your hive body a super. Because <laughs> to me, that's the honey, and your queen shouldn't be in your honey. So, you know, the terminology is really important. And plus, it makes you sound a little more professional if you're using proper terminology to talk about things when you go out and tell people you want to hang up a swarm trap you need to make sure that you're talking about the proper thing and explaining to them what you want to do in proper terminology because right. nowadays you can look it up on the internet and they're going to find out pretty quick if you're wrong <laughs> all right we got some hands up now let's keep now rolling we're cooking. <laughs> now we're cooking all right bob you are up next go ahead uh yep go ahead okay Hey, so John, I got um, a hive where I see a little bit of poop. Not a lot, but a little, you know, uh, right at the hole there. I have Maybe a hole. Maybe McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I know how things can get out of hand quick. So what do you do this time of year to, to stop that? Are you talking about a package or are you talking about an established hive? It's an established hive. It's been good all year. 
and it was good all winter. And now, just now, a little bit as they're flying out. You might not have enough ventilation in that hive and they're picking up a, a gut disease, a diarrhea, no right, that, Yeah, that's what I think it is. But how do, you know, it's getting pretty soon I'll be opening them up. Uh, well, you can't do no tea tree oil right now. It's too cold. You don't want to put moisture in there. I'd make sure you have plenty of vents. Okay, we, all right. We, on our hive bodies, which we use for our brood, we put a whole inch and an eighth in the front and one in the back with screens over them, plus okay. an open bottom board. Not a screen bottom out, but the entrance reducer is opened up about three inches. Right. Okay. I could take the entrance reducer off, maybe, and just leave it open. Maybe that would help. It's only like a week or two before. If I the really... bees haven't been flying for a while, they're doing what they normally do. They got to go. They got to go. Okay. So you're going to get a little bit of that, right? You shouldn't have much, other than unless you've got permitting uh, honey in there. Right. Okay. Yeah. It's not too much. I mean, it's, you know, just a little bit, but okay. I. I think I'm just going to, I don't know if I could drill a hole in there. Maybe I can. I just walk out with a drill and just put it in there, I guess. I don't know. I do that. No, I guess maybe just uh, open the bottom more. I would give it a little more ventilation. You got a high top yeah. feeder on it? Uh, yeah, I do. Is it, is it vented? Um, the feeder is, actually it is. Yes, it is. Yep, it is. Yeah. Because if you're not getting enough ventilation, you're going to get that. Right. No, no, there's one hole in the front. There's none in the back, but there's one in the front. For the feeder. Right, right. The, feed, the hole in the feeder should be – I use two in the back. Yeah, yeah. I just have one in the front. I should, uh, I should add one. I guess when the season gets going, I'll – You're not going to get enough updraft. It's like a chimney. Right. Okay. So I think going forward, I'll just make sure there's one in the front one in the back. No, in the feeder, you should have two in the back, because if you have yep. your bottom board open, then you get that upward draft. And it goes okay, so two, one in the front, two in the back. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, thanks. Good. Joe May. Yeah, I get the biggest question, I guess, because everybody wants bees from their local vicinity. I've had my bees all the way in North Dakota. They live in North Dakota. Uh, they've been as far south as Texas. They live in Texas. But for the ones that, the new bees that can't buy quality bees someplace and they were dying to get started, you can get a package of bees or whatever. And you can always buy a local queen. In six weeks, the hive is going to be totally that queen's bees. So you can change that hive anytime you want. If they're mean bees, requeen. Six weeks, they're not going to be mean no more. But that's just something I want to throw out there. Okay. All right. Uh, Scott, go ahead. A quick question about feeding. Uh, is, there, is there ever a time when two to one isn't a good idea as far as a sugar, sugar water ratio? It depends on what you want to do. I mean, when I say that is I want to make bees. The more sugar you get those bees to eat, the faster they're going to multiply. If you put a one to one, they're going to evaporate the water, waste more time evaporation and not get nothing out of it. It's like you eating a piece of toast and expecting to work hard all day, and then the guy next to you eats a steak dinner or a steak breakfast with eggs on it. He's going to work harder. He's got the protein in it. You can't draw wax on water. You've got to have enough sugar or feed honey back, one or the other. That's what I'm doing right now. I, I dumped out a, a two-and-a-half-gallon bucket of honey on the top of 55-gallon barrels. I just... I pour a big bunch on each barrel and just let them come and get all they want. Okay. So if you have the sugar, two to one the whole time, I mean, just use it all the time if you can. I would. Okay. I mean, that's strictly up to you. There's some people that they are more one-to-one -one and the trouble with one-to-one, -one, if you don't put a little bit of bleach with it, it's going to ferment on you in two days or three days, especially when the weather warms up. Okay. We run 300 gallons, and we run a cup of bleach in 300 gallons. Because the sun hits the tank out there, it's going to evaporate and break down like a swimming pool. Bees drink water from a swimming pool, and it's highly chlorinated, and they're not dying. Yeah, okay. And I've, I've heard apple cider vinegar. Can you add that to your uh... – There's a lot of people tell you a lot of things. I just <laughs> told you what I do. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, let's see. Over to Robbie. We're gonna try Robbie again. You there, Robbie? Uh, okay. Hello. You there? Hold on. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. 
<laughs> I apologize. I got no. Okay, we'll come back to Robbie. Uh, Ricky, go ahead. Yep. Yeah, um, just a follow up on adding that frame of bees, uh, for a frame of brew, uh, Don. Should I lock them up for a couple of days after doing that? It depends on how many bees you shake in. And if you look at the bees, you can identify if they're older bees, field bees, or nurse bees. I don't move my hives at the most uh, five or ten foot. I run usually six to eight hives to a stand. And if I make splits, I might move them to the stand behind it, which is five foot away. If you don't have a lot of nurse bees and you got mostly older bees, field bees, put a screen over them, keep them closed up for a couple of days. They'll reorient okay. to that box. Great, thanks. Okay. okay. If you if you couldn't tell Don where Ricky's from from his accent, I think he's from Don Under. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I am getting a lot of people from down under and from Croatia and from Russia. I don't know how I'm getting over there. YouTube, it's worldwide. Is it worldwide? Oh, well, they probably need to have some sort of a convention, fat bee man <laughs> convention or something. Don't give them any more ideas. <laughs> we got enough going. All right, moving on to Terry. Go ahead, Terry. Okay, uh, Don, what yes. is your... What are your thoughts on the oxalic acid with, you, with using a fogger instead of um, being having to be hooked up to either electric or to a battery? Well, the only thing I can say about it, it's faster. It's not as effective as a wand or a ProVap 110. You need to use oxalic acid in the strongest way you possibly can. We done it for a while on one yard, and I didn't see good results, so I, I wouldn't recommend it. Now, it does do something. You can take a, a mineral oil and fog them with mineral oil. It's a very slow suffocation process. It does do something, but if you're going to do the effort, do something that's going to actually do some good. Oxalic acid, there's nothing wrong with treating your bees with it. It's 100% good. It's cheap. It's the most effective thing out there. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, we don't have any more hands up right now. Get those hands up. Who's got a question for Don? Come on. Let me let me just say one thing real quick while no one's got a hand up. For Bob Moskowitz, is it Moskowitz? Miskowitz. Um, I just drilled four inch and a half holes in the back of box. When um, the bee farm came, I wasn't planning on making three splits, but we made three splits while he was here. I had the boxes, but they didn't have a vent. So I drilled an inch and a half hole in the back with all the bees in there. No problem. So if your bees are kind of calm anyway, that you're not going to, I don't think you're going to have a problem because I just did it a couple of days ago. Okay. All right, man. All right. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah. So when are you you're guys going to start doing, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, can I speak now or? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. All right. Wasn't sure if it was my turn. So uh, thanks again, Anthony. I appreciate that. So the oxalic acid, when, uh, when is a good time to start that up? I would do, if you put in packages in, there's no need to do a package right away. I would wait about the fourth week. If okay. you have an existing hive and you haven't done it in a long time, I'd do three consecutive treatments a week apart. And then I'd stick to once a month. And then, you know, check for mites. But and now starting when? I, I, yeah, I, 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 st I was doing the oxalic acid in the fall. It was working great. Yep. Uh, but what is it? Can we start now? You think another week or two? Or well, if you listen to the videos, I keep working right around 55 degrees. No okay. bees around here are flying at 41 to 43 degrees. Are flying, but I wouldn't take a chance on breaking a cluster, especially where you live. I'd wait to 55. You got a good floor traffic of bees going in and out. You could trade. So it's weird this time this year. The weather is changing from 20 degrees to like 70 degrees. So yep, it's, it's kind of throwing me off. I feel like sometimes I feel like I should be doing it, and then we have a snowstorm the day after. Yeah, I better wait until it's more consistent. Hey, you'll be all right. You can okay. under treat. But I don't think you're going to over treat. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Oh, Paul's finally got a question. Go ahead. 
Don, I want to get your um, DIY plan for the um, Ross rounds in the five frame um, nuke box. On the web page, there's a whole list of plans, or you can save money by buying a package. Yeah. yeah. But um, on the plans for the Ross rounds, do you use the springs in those plans or no? I, threw, I, I bought my first bunch in 1972 and 73, and it wasn't three hours later I threw them in the trash. What I right. use personally is when I wedge them to one side, I cut a piece of three-eighths material, and I stick it in there just to keep them in place. And once you use them a little bit, there's enough propolis on them that they're not going to come apart. Okay. And, you know, speaking of Ross rounds, there's a lot of different people are approaching that method. Hog halves, uh, there's several other ones. And I'm not building anybody's product up, but I'm saying Ross rounds is the best product out there as far as making money. The advantage of that is you could pull two frames out of the middle, and then you can put those back with new foundation. With hog halves, if you pull two or three sections, it's made frame, container, everything together. There's no way you can reuse it. So you, once you open it, that's it. It's gone. No, I know. I have them both. Yeah. There's another uh, – it's a cassette methods out there, which, you know, I don't make a dime telling you Ross rounds. I tried different things. It's like uh, making Queens, the Nikot system the jenner system i bought each one to show students the difference i wouldn't waste my time and money on them yeah you know if you're gonna want queens i did a method back there in the b lab turn a frame sideways cut you a two inch strip or an inch and a half sit it vertically between two frames most people can't handle more than 10 12 queen cells and usually one strip like that gets you at least a dozen that's a no-brainer and that you're not spending a dime yeah. That's why people don't like what I tell these things. It's tricks. <laughs> That's why these, these uh, chats are valuable to pick up little tidbits here and there. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Don. Okay. okay. Can try Robbie again. You there this time, Robbie? I'm here. I'm here. Sorry about that. No battery. Um, I was shopping a month ago for these seeds, tell me what you think about them. Um, is it me or is he just breaking up pretty bad? No, it's just slow. What, why don't you just tell us what you got, Robbie? Zinnias, um, giant, about it, queen. Um, so I think uh, zinnias and sunflowers. He wants to know how those are for the bees. Sunflowers? Bees will work sunflowers, but I don't think you're going to get a, an abundance of honey from them. If you're trying to make honey and you want something to plant and you can stand the honey, plant buckwheat. Some people like about, buckwheat. I don't care for it myself. What about zinnias? I don't know about zinnias. Now, they will work onions because we have pollinators that pollinate onions. But I don't know about the, you know, the, the honey, what it would taste like. I'm also going to do thyme and chive. Well, if you do those, you're going to get some honey. You're not going to get an abundance. If you're going to plant anything in your yard, get you a bunch of white clover and spread that around. That works good. I got plenty of that. Do, do, that will work a plenty. Old. Does that answer your question, Robbie? Do you know any, what about herbal plant, plants? Do you, do you like any herb? Herb plants? I don't personally raise herb plants. Rosemary works good, thyme, they, they'll work a little bit, but you're not talking about an abundance. For the same average, you could put, you know, something else is going to produce more, like clover, buckwheat, um, stuff right. like that. I've been told that borage is their favorite herb to uh to Flax is good. Uh, a lavender is good, but you got to have abundance of it to do any good. If you live in a field someplace where they got kudzu, that's the thing to get kudzu. Okay. Got a burglar alarm. Yeah, I don't know who's... 
Everybody should be muted. I don't know where that's coming from. Yeah. All right, Pat, you are up. Yeah, I got an answer for Donnie. If he's got a pencil, I'll give him a couple of things that are really good. He can get B balm, B A L N, sweet peas, the borage, like y'all talked about. Cosmos are very good. I think he already mentioned those. Thyme, oregano, and rosemary is really good if you're looking for herbs. But your best bet is to contact either your local agricultural extension agent or a master gardener group or a garden club. They would have a list of things that work and grow well in your particular area. And that's what's going to be most important because things that might thrive here might not grow as well where he is. So he needs to contact uh, garden clubs or something like that that would have that list. Okay. Can you get all that, Robbie? Uh, yes. <laughs> all right. It'll, it's being recorded, so you can uh, get it all later, too. Right, right, right. Okay. And over to Anthony. Yeah, one other thing, Robbie. My wife grows basil here. She grows two different kinds of basil. Basil gets a lot of flowers on it. like a, It's like a lavender. When the thing comes up, it gets tons of little flowers on it. Boy, they love that. And the sunflowers, there's many, many different varieties of sunflower. And I tried one here. And you grow the big sun, the one that's got one big flower on the top. The bees here never touched it. And then I was recommended by other people to get Lemon Queen. And I got the Lemon Queen variety. And I posted a picture of me standing beside one of my Lemon Queens. It's about eight feet tall. And it had 25 flowers on it. And the bees really liked the Lemon, the lemon Queen variety. At least mine did here. I don't know if it'll work for you. But uh, if you want to grow sunflowers, you can buy them online. Just get a pack of Lemon Queens and just try it and see if they work for you. That's all I got, man. Don't forget if you have the bees working sunflower, sunflower honey uh, crystallizes very, very easily. A lot, be, of, uh, lot of your honey. And if you eat much sunflower, you won't want to eat sunflower honey no more. If you've ever had pancakes at McDonald's about 10 years ago, they was buying a lot of sunflower. Hmm. And canola oil, uh, canola honey. Okay. Um, where'd he go? There he is. Uh, Bobbin is up next. Go ahead, Bobbin. Hello. Um, Hello. I want something to say about uh, splitting the colony. I read on group. I don't know how many times people ask dawn or someone when can split the colony but I mean uh, I don't know where they live but some in some place it's too early early to split colony uh, dawn uh, I mean uh, I think dawn uh, right today or yesterday to somewhere waiting to Easter but uh, First, uh, you must, uh, people must wait uh, first to see John on Hive. And if they don't have uh, drones in Hive, you can't do it split colony. Uh, you don't have uh, drones to mate the queen. And I don't know. Uh, what else to say? It's basically area. We, you know, we're dealing with east, west, north, to south. You know, the people right now north, you know, they're wasting their time. So I'm in an area where I try to wait to at least Easter. You can split, you can do these things, but you run that risk. So that's what I try to caution people. What is it that you want to risk? If you've got five hives and you're anxious, you split them and you lose them, you're not doing nothing. You're better off to wait a month and then split five hives and turn out to 50. So those are the things you need to consider. Yeah, but uh, I don't know how many, even this, that colony is strong. Right. Um, is it uh, too strong or 
I don't know. Uh, the winter is just uh, past somewhere, and somewhere it's still winter. I don't believe the the same there is the same uh, strong high in the south or somewhere in the north. But uh, here we first wait the some uh, we we first uh, split here in Serbia in May. We don't do split uh, before May uh, because here in May we got the first nectar and first honey to extract and after first extract honey we doing the split colony uh, if you want you can split colony on two or three or five or how many you want but the colony must be first strong and after that you can do split how many time you want and then also you need a mated queen you know, or you need a lot more bees, a queen yeah. cell. Yeah, and also I want to say, uh, for new beekeeper, it's much better to buy mated queen yes. than to wait or to experiment with splitting and to wait to got mated queen in the colony. That is wasting the time. When you buy the mated queen, she can lay uh, immediately eggs. Three to four and, days, five days, you know, she's laying. Yeah, but uh, that is uh, three or four days. But when they, uh, when they want to doing uh, alone and they, when they want to mate a mated queen on by themselves, and they must wait 15 or 20 days. And that is the lost time for them and it's lost production. Yeah. And I don't want to, uh, maybe this is the reclame, but uh, by mated queen, here is done. He can produce enough queen. Well, the, everybody's going to try to make their, their own queen. I mean, anybody can make a queen. That's a natural process. The thing you want to take into consideration is if you want to produce honey, you're farther ahead to get a mated queen because they're in production right away. You let them make their own queen. You've got 16 days before the queen cell is there. Then you've got to wait another five days before she gets mated. And you, then you run the risk if she don't return. You could lose a lot of bees. Then you got 21 days before the population starts to increase. And those bees are not going to forage for you. Those are nurse bees. Yeah, but and also, uh, also uh, they must knew it. If they don't have any hive in the round near, in the, the different hive, if they have only two or three hive, uh, they can, uh, that, that new queen, uh, can't uh, mated with brothers, and right. that's not that's not good. Okay. All right. Answer your question, Bobbin. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Matt is awful quiet tonight. He's not eating dinner. <laughs> we go. Uh, Pat's got a question. Go ahead, Pat. Well, I had something for Bobbin. Um, the worst problem that beekeepers have is spring fever. Everybody's got it. We've been cooped up too long and it's driving us crazy. We want to be in the bees. And some years in my location, I, in February, I'm making splits. But some years, I better wait a little bit longer because we might get snow still. So it depends on where you are. But um, a lot of backyard beekeepers will wait until after nectar flow and then make a couple of splits because they want to make sure they get the honey and they don't know how to time the queens and, and when they're going to lay and that kind of thing. So if, if recommendation when you go to bee club meetings and stuff for backyard beekeepers is to make your splits after nectar flow when you got plenty of workers too and they don't really understand how to time out when the brood is going to emerge so they know how much bees they're going to have so they just tell them, well, wait till after nectar flow, you got all those extra workers anyway. So, you know, put them to work making more 
splits for you and make some money. When we're trying to make splits and nukes to sell, we want to get ahead of that nectar flow if we can and make splits. You know, I make splits two or three times a year, depending on the, the year, actually, you know, if it's early spring or late spring where we are. So it, it's very relevant. But again, the worst problem we have is spring fever. And I tell everybody, wait. But also, like he touched on, and Don, you may want to really mention this some too in one of our chats, is the uh, drones. People don't understand that they don't mate in the box. They have to fly. Okay. And the queen flies further than her drones can fly. So if you're not sure you've got drones in your other bees in your area, then you need to take yours and make a split and send it over on the back end of your yard somewhere so that those drones are interacting with the bees that you're trying to split. And people don't understand wh what the drones do and, and how that works. They think they're unimportant. If, if worse comes to worse and you want to do that, then buy at least a package from one or two different other people so that you get a mixture there. That's yep. another way. But you have to buy bees coming from the south because the south bees from down south Georgia are five to six weeks ahead of what I am right now. Right. So, right. you know, you can have queen cells. You could have hatched queens, virgin queens. It's not going to do you good if you don't have mature uh, drones. They yep. have to be old enough not just hatched. Right. And they got to be flying out on a regular basis to the, and people don't know about drone congregation areas and that kind of stuff. And so they don't know what the drones do. They think they sit in the box with the queen and make babies all day long. <laughs> and so uh, that's a really important aspect of queen rearing and nuke production that people don't understand. See, a commercial beekeeper that's producing full-time we don't worry about a honey flow. We create an artificial honey flow. As long as we have natural pollen coming in, if you want to cheat the system, you can feed artificial pollen. But this time of the year until about May 30th or even to into June, we still have a lot of pollen coming in. And if you feed oh, yeah. artificial yeah. pollen, then you run a high risk of uh, overpopulating hive with, with small high beetles. Yep. Yeah. So those, those are some of the answers for Bob and it, we may be a little bit different timing for him, but spring fever has got everybody. I've got it bad. I can see my bees from my front door and I want to be out there in them because I know they're up to no good. <laughs> well, there's two things right now, spring fever and catalogs. Oh, yes. The catalogs okay. drive you nuts because you need everything new in there. Yep. <laughs> Brushy Mountain just sent out their new one for 2018. It came today. <laughs> All right, if that will cover everybody, I think. We're into overtime now, so... Uh, time and a half. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you, Don. Thank you, okay. everyone. Have a great uh, St. Patrick's Day, and we'll see you all in two weeks. Okay, everybody have a good night. Appreciate you showing up.